Good morning, everyone, and thank you for starting your day out with me. I'm Jenna Stauffer. My first guest this morning, he's a famed Marine Keys artist who goes by the name Pasta. Now, that might ring a few bells because once you hear a name like that, you definitely can't forget it, nor can you forget talent like that once you see his work. He is on a journey today to study and paint the most beautiful aquatic wildlife in the Keys. You can see his work at his signature gallery in Isle Morada, which is located in all part of the Morada Way Arts and Cultural District. Pasta, it's such a pleasure having you here on the show with me this morning. Thank you very much. <laughs> pleasure to be here. I have to ask how you got the name Pasta. Well, Pantaleo for some people is hard to pronounce when I was growing up. And uh, my brother and I was nicknamed Pasta Fazul. Mm -hmm. I think they call me Pasta Junior for a bunch of years. <laughs> and I started uh, in the uh, painting of motorcycles back in the 70s. And I signed the gas tanks pasta. Okay. It stuck till the van craze hit. 1979, I was in the newspaper for uh, Lord of the Rings uh, airbrushing of a van at the convention center. And mm -hmm. big letters in the Miami Herald says Pasta Panaleo. Mm -hmm. and couldn't get rid of it after that one. Oh, well, I think it's great. Yeah. Just keep that always. <laughs> yeah. Now, Pasta, you were just saying you did motorcycle paintings? Did a lot of automotive uh, paintings back mm -hmm. when I was younger, mm -hmm. and it was all a combination of boats, cars, vans, motorcycles. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I was fishing on the side, it was kind of my passion was more about fishing. Mm -hmm. Monster Garage was how I made my living, and fishing is how I kind of got away from things. Mm -hmm. It was your hobby and my passion. My hobby, and yeah, and it was, it was totally opposite of what I lived in in the world of uh, monster garage life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then uh, got known from going off fishing a lot and, and started doing some fishing tournaments. Mm -hmm. And with that came uh, the marine life and the beauty of the Keys. While I came down here fishing, couldn't stop looking at the beauty of the Keys and started uh, curtailing my monster garage life for some more of the paintings of the aquatic wildlife. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, quite, a, quite a passion, hit me pretty hard with the colors down here. and. Uh, just the way everything kind of melts together and with the with the light, mm -hmm. and I just started depicting some more paintings of marine wildlife, mm -hmm. and lo and behold, uh, some collectors came out of the woodwork, started collecting my work. Mm -hmm. Well, so. it's good work. Thank so <laughs> they did good by collecting that. Mm -hmm. So aquatic wildlife, that's what you focus on, correct, Pasta? Yeah, I'm mostly a, a I'm a game fish artist first and foremost, but I do bend a lot into now mangrove work and. Uh, and we're doing some different different species now for the first time in a long time. I started my career as sailfish was my my big passion. You know, mm -hmm. painting a sailfish, I'd paint it a hundred different ways. And I was pretty bent on billfish, sailfish, marlin, mahi, mahi. And it was tied to the, uh, it was definitely tied to the, to the fishing tournament industry at, at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Then I got away from that and started doing a little bit more in the art world and bringing the sport fishing in the art world and trying to meld those together with different techniques and styles and not just go in status quo in the, in the marine life world. Mm -hmm. When did the gallery get started? The first, the first gallery in Alamorado was called Keys to Life. Ironically enough, it's after a painting with no fish in it. It's a mangrove painting of mine. Okay. And it's, very, it's a kind of semi-famous painting. It's got a cult following, and it's all mangroves, just a swash of the mangroves under, under and above the waterline. And it was called Keys to Life. Mm -hmm. And that was, I believe, in 19, uh, I want to say, well, it was 2000, no, 2000 and to 2003. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we did that gallery for a bunch of years, and then I finally found a great little historical building in the middle of town. Mm -hmm. And that's where I'm at now, is, is you know, right in the middle of the art and culture district. Right, and that's what I mentioned. So this is all part of the Murata Way Arts and Cultural District. Correct. And Pasi, you're actually one of the co-founders of this district. I am. Dick Haygood and myself and, and Lori from Gallery Murata. We band together with a few partners in business with the restaurants. Uh, Kion Green Turtle were originals, and uh, we all came together and decided to have a once a month gathering with music and culinary and arts and all the things that, that make an art walk possible. And we had some believers that said we're going to stick with it. And they also, uh, a lot of people said, well, why don't you just do it during the season? season. And Dick Haygood and I both decided if we're going to do it, we're doing 12 months every, every year. We're mm -hmm. not going to stop when it's slow. We don't care if a lot of people don't show up. And I'll tell you, the locals came out for us in the off season. Great. And it's, it's every third Thursday is our out walk. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is our second year we're having that big expo, which I can talk to you about later. Mm -hmm. But the Art and Culture District in Murata Way and, and, and that whole thing has got a lot of traction. And uh, we're getting a lot more artists from around the country now. Mm -hmm. And more galleries are popping up around us because of our advertising and our voices become bigger. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot more. Uh, 
other galleries popping up and wanting to be in there. And we're doing some university uh, work now with, uh, with different teachings of different skill sets by different artists. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about this ex expo that you have coming mm -hmm. up. The expo is January 26th and 27th. Mm -hmm. It's a world-class event. It's juried and artists all over the country mm -hmm. coming in. We're, I think we locked it into about 80, 80 artists now. We don't want to get, get because of the, the road and all, we want to keep a lot of space around the art. And we want to make it a, a friendly area to, to migrate through. So we have 80 of the probably the top artists in the country coming. It's our second year. It was a huge success the first year. We got written up in national publications being for a first year event was a, was a world class. Mm -hmm. We brought uh, some great venues in, some great music in. And uh, we had some performance art, street art that came in that was highly renowned. And uh, we're doing the same thing the second year. We have a very, I would say, an event that the, that the community needed for a long time. It wasn't just a roadside show, no disrespect to any of those shows. Right. But we did a juried show. It is a paid admission. It, it's a $5 admission fee, but it mm -hmm. does go back into the district and to the runnings of the district. And uh, very successful. We had a good time at last year, and this year sold out very quick with the artists. Well, I'm sure you will have another success this year, and mm -hmm. hopefully everybody can make their way down to the Expo and, of course, make their way down to Pasta's Gallery, located in the heart of Almorada. Thank you for being on this morning. Thank you. I'm going to take a quick break. I'll be right back.